How are you doing today? Bill Applegate here. I'm going to do a lesson on a real popular standard called All of Me. I'm going to first do the head in kind of a quasi chord solo style. Then I'm going to do two different comps. One's more of a Freddie Green's type comping and one's like a pattern but a little pattern to it. The second comping. So I hope you enjoy that. And then I'm also going to do a little solo. Okay, so let's get started with the head. Okay, starting here on the C, I'm using this kind of six chord like this. Then I'm throwing in a six nine right here. There, you're not really playing the chord, you're just playing the melody notes. Then you slip in the six nine chord, three, six, nine, five. Then back to this chord. Here I'm doing an E nine, the third in the bass here. So add a little color on this E7 chord, I'm playing the sharp 11 here. Going to a nice voicing of an E13. Then doing using that same chord, doing a little rhythmic interest there. So. Okay, just real straight ahead, A7 chord. Melody, just a half step below. Sliding into the... A7 chord from a half step below. Flat ninth in the melody. It's kind of like a D7 sus. And when I go to the D minor 7, I'm keeping that sus idea here, but in a lower voice. So there's the 11th there. D minor 11, you'd call that. Okay, back to this 13th chord. Just kind of with the melody sing out there, I guess. Back to the same voice and I used for the C6, but now I'm using it for this A minor 7, but I am adding the, the uh, fourth there. Pretty similar to this, huh? Adding the 13th here. A little chromatic melody there. Okay, throw in, using that same rhythmic idea that I've been uh, throwing around here. Okay, on that G7, I'm adding a little, so instead of just the regular G7, I'm adding the sharp 11 there. You might think of it as a flat fifth. Okay, the next eight bars, I play exactly the same as the first eight bars. Okay, for the F6, I'm just using this bar across four strings. And some octaves. Then the same chord, just flat in the third. seven voicing makes it really easy to get the melody and here I'm using an A13 typical D minor 7 G13 and I'm just kind of sliding into the second one. typical voicing of an E flat diminished seventh we're right to the fourth again 
G13 with a third in the base. Okay, let's move on to the comping. This will be the Freddie Green style. Okay, looking at the comping, so uh, straight quarter notes, put a little breath in between each one. Some people will accent two and four a little bit, you can experiment with that. Uh, some people say Freddie Green would just emphasize one note and kind of mute the others. If you're that, remember other people in the 30s and 40s, they're also played straight quarter notes, not just Freddie Green, so there's other people that we you can look at too. Okay, I start here with this. So what I'm also doing is playing only the sixth string, fourth string, and third string. Sometimes you can play the fifth string too, but I didn't in this example. Okay, now I started with the sixth because the melody was the root, and the major seven can be a little bit dissonant there, so I, I started with the 6th. That's why I did the 6th first, then the major 7th. Major 7th, 6th, major 7th. Here I did like an E7 with a sus. So the regular E7, back to E7 with a sus, then flat the 5th. You could also think of that as a tritone sub to A7. Kind of kept this note here and have a suspension for the A7. You can think of that as a flat 9 or a tritone sub to the D, but the D is minor. And I'm just inverting it. Okay, and then I play the same thing that I played before on the E7. Then A minor 7. I'm inverting that. Okay, and then the D7. Here I'm playing the root, the flat 7th, and then ninth. Now here only the two notes move down, and then the top note stays. So that's still kind of a D9. This is playing on D7 here. Back to this D9. D minor 7, inverting down, back up to G7, inverting down. You'll notice a lot of these shapes work on more than one chord. Like the C6 and the A minor 7 are always going to be uh, the same voices, okay? Like this E7. Okay. Okay, the second half, I'll let you come up with some ideas on your own. I did record it, so uh, you can look at that too. Okay, For, uh, this could be really useful, like maybe on the melody, if, if, like if sax is playing the melody. Also, if there's like a piano player that um, doesn't really give you any space, sometimes Freddie Green's the best way to go, so you can at least still play something, okay? All right, so let's look at now at the second copy.
if your uh, backing up a solo to just plays lots of notes, doesn't leave any space, and you don't want your comping to get in his way, doing like kind of a repeated pattern that kind of repeats over and over is one way to kind of solve that situation. So that's what I did here. So the basic pattern is... So then you can just change chords, but keep that same pattern. So I'm here using the 6-9, then I just go up here for a little variety at, with the root 9-6, so still, still another 6-9. Okay, yeah, then I'm just going to E9. A little tension here with the uh, flat 9 and the flat 13, so... with the third in the bass. Just do an A9. Back to the strip theme. Here I'm using kind of those chordal chords going up. Keep that same rhythm, rhythm pattern. Okay, just an E9 here. Creating a little tension with a sharp 9. Flat 9 and flat 13. So it's... Putting the fourth in the bass. That's a real nice voicing. That also works for a C chord, okay? But here it's the fifth, third, fourth, flat seventh. So it's just an A, typical A minor nine voicing. I'll play that whole A minor thing again. Okay, and then I'm keeping that B from the A minor 9, for, which is the 13th of the D7, 9th, 13th, and then I'm doing that same 4th thing I did on the A minor, G9, G flat 9 with the flat 13, okay, and then the second half I'll let you figure out something for yourself to do there, okay, let's go on and look at the solo. Okay, I'm starting the solo here on the ninth, doing kind of an enclosure around the seventh. Starting three notes above the seventh and then one note below. Going to the fifth, and just kind of an arpeggiated figure. Three, five, three. We'll put in the seventh there, okay? I think that made a little interest there. I think most people were thinking that they were gonna hear the root. And, the seventh instead. Starting on the ninth, we're going to chromatically to the third, fifth, then some uh, altered notes here, the flat fifth, back to the natural fifth, third, flat fifth, third, sharp nine, flat nine. Here on the A chord, I'm starting on the fifth and going chromatically to the flat seventh. Then doing an enclosure around the third. Here I'm just kind of doing a bluesy thing. Almost a rock thing, huh? We all want to be rock stars, so I threw that in there. Okay, then now another enclosure around the flat third of the D minor. Root. This is all uh, chord tones. Then an enclosure around the 
a fifth of the G minor seven. Okay, here I just went right up the arpeggio. Two notes on each note of the arpeggio, guys. Octaves, root, seven, five. And what I'm doing is I'm going one note underneath each, a half step under each chord tone and sliding into the chord tone. slide that. Yeah. Five, six, five, and then just arpeggio. Flat third to the regular third. Then just two notes on each, two times playing each note. Basically just down on the Dorian scale, I guess. Lydian scale, five, then go to the third. Okay, second half, I just improvised, so I'll let you come up with your own ideas there on the second half. All right. All right, there you have it, a quick little lesson on All of Me, a very popular standard. I really like playing this tune, and uh, I hope this was useful and something you could use. Remember, if these lessons are useful to you, please click the subscribe button. I'd really appreciate that. And... Uh, like I said, I hope this is useful, and I'll see you guys next time. Have a great day.